And you, you, I know you've talked about how good it is to have chemistry with Ryan uh, coming back from last season. How was that kind of shown during the early portion of camp? Oh, man, I mean, I think it's still like a like a, a building process. You know, we spend so much time away, man. But uh, um, I think with Ryan, with all the quarterbacks, just kind of continually uh, using these days so that way we come – we don't have the games to kind of get ready, so we got to go in the thing uh, first game and uh, make sure we're all – have a lot of chemistry built. So we're trying to use each day as, as, as best we can. Teron? Yeah, Khalif, what's up, man? You made your mark last season as a deep threat, but there's clearly more than that to your game. Is it really important to you to show these these coaches that you're not just a guy to, to run deep routes? In fact, you could work the middle of the field, et cetera? Um, man, definitely. I think it's uh, – I mean, just to, just to have an all-around game, I think when it comes down to being dependable um, – that can they can they can they trust me in, in any situation, whether it be deep threat, catching a short route, I mean anything they need me to do to be able to step in and kind of fill any role. So um I definitely think it's a point of emphasis. And for me it's just uh I just want to make sure I consistently do that so that way they can uh, continue to trust me. Was that something you kind of honed in on, your your route running and those type of things? Uh, was that something you honed in on during this offseason? Oh no, definitely, man. That's that's one of the biggest things that I that I learned. Uh is that in order to get better at football, you got, you got to play more football. So um, for me, man, just a lot a lot of route running, a lot of attention to detail, and uh, kind of using things that I learned from other receivers uh, in the past years from studying them and, and being next to them and kind of putting it all together and seeing how it works for me the best. So, uh, Kyle? Yeah, as a guy who had the opportunity to really show what you could do in those preseason games last year. You talk about, you know, to get better at football, you got to play a lot of football. What would your advice be to fringe guys who are trying to make the last couple spots on this roster without the benefit of preseason games? What would your advice be to them about how they can, in this kind of strange new world, uh, show themselves? Um, man, Kyle, to be honest with you, even, even for myself, it's something I can <laughs> definitely take my own advice, man, because I'm still, I'm still battling, uh, you know what I'm saying, um, my, the mental side of the game, um, even as we speak. But um, if I was in their shoes and, and even my, in my own case, I would say um, the best thing that for everything is trust. So if they know they can put you out there in any position, in any play, like worst going to worst, I know that guy's going to uh, know how to do his job um, and be in the right place at the right time. Um, I think that's the best way to, that I open my, my foot forward, just show, hey, like, look, I know my plays. Um, I know that you put me out there, I'm going to know what to do and how to do it. So um, because you don't have that during preseason, I mean, I think it's even more of a point of emphasis now for me as well, just just because, like I said, I've had mental relapse and stuff like that too, to, to make sure that they can go out there and trust me to do my job. And then once you knock that out, go find a way to do it well. So, um, yeah, build that trust that they can trust you. Eric? Hey, Khalif. Uh, I, I don't know if you realize it. I'm just uh, you were, you've been kind of one of the more talked about players um, in training camp for the Titans. I'm curious if that's something you're aware of. And, you know, as somebody that's been cut, waved a bunch of times over the course of your career, how different uh, is that experience, um, you know, of just uh, being more talked about than than maybe you otherwise would be? Oh, uh, man, it's actually kind of crazy. So I, I, I actually deleted my I delete my like my social media so I'm not distracted by it and uh, I got a lot of um, a lot of things that are on my web browser that aren't even I, like it's, I have a limited web browser so some things I can't even pull up so um, that's th just to make sure that I don't I don't even keep that in the frame of mind because I kind of have like a um, I have a goal and I kind of have ex uh, expectations for myself and things that I want to do and, uh, and and things that I want to attack so um, I, I wouldn't even <laughs> I wouldn't even know man I try to keep it as, as <laughs> is out of sight, out of sight and out of mind as I can, man, because um, I know there's, there's some personal things and goals that I have um, that I want to make sure that I help with this team. So um, that's kind of like my main focus when I go into camp. But I actually do it every camp and I always shut off <laughs> all my social media and everything just so I can stay as focused as I can. Sure. And, and kind of going along those lines, uh, Khalif, you know, I, I know I spoke with you about that spiritual journey you took last year uh, to Thailand. Did you have any such trips this past off season, and I guess just in general, what was your off season, off season like? Um, no, not that this off season was. Uh, I, I got a chance to heal up, man, <laughs> just a little bit. Um, like I said, it's just because of the journey that has been over the uh, past few years, you know, there is an off season. But you know, what I'm saying I have to come in and make sure that day one <laughs> I'm flying around. Especially, I, I've had experience with like having new coaches, and you come back earlier, you have that 
that early camp for the new coaches. So I've kind of always been in that mindset to as soon as the season ends, I get maybe a week or two and I'm back at it. So um, this this offseason is actually and then the coronavirus happened. So it kind of was a little bit of um, a little bit more helpful to kind of sit back and rest and, and spend time with my family. So uh, that's what I did the most, just to relay as much of my experiences that I've had over the course of the, the last three or four years, man, and, and kind of just instill whatever values I can into my uh, siblings. So. Uh, Terry? Uh, Khalid, since all the coronavirus stuff and all the protocols that are out there on the field now, how much has that changed how you – go about your daily business in on the field and during the course of practice? And are there any things that you've had to kind of retrain yourself or any habits you've had to break uh, in order to adjust to that? Um, a little man, I, <laughs> I'm a loving dude, man. So I'm used to all the high fives and the hugs and all. I mean, that's my favorite part of the game, especially with my teammates. So um, especially now it's kind of just like reframe it as, as much social um, – distance as we can get you try to make sure you kind of maintain that but uh that's the that's a little bit new just to just the the high fives and the hugs and the chest bumps and all the normal stuff that you normally get uh you kind of try to limit as much as you can so and that's different obviously uh off-season training was a lot different because i uh you know what i'm saying we we're especially me being in atlanta um you had to be at home so um some some tweaks and stuff that uh that that you have to go through especially with all the protocols and stuff but um I mean, to be honest, man, we, we I think everybody missed each other. So uh, we still we still find a way to uh, connect and stuff with, with being socially distant. David Beauclair. Khalif, given all the information and discussion about head injuries these days, the, did the hit you took against New Orleans give you any reason or, or a moment to, to think about whether you wanted to or should keep playing? Um. I think I mean I think it's is definitely uh something that I, that I was conscious of but I I don't think my 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 reason to play um kind of over overseas anything that kind of happened during that play cuz my reason to play is uh a lot of it is for my family man a lot of people that put me in this position so um my my reason to play my why I guess what everybody says is uh kind of pushed me past to overlook those and, and and to be honest with you I mean this is a this is a dangerous game. So um, you, are you kind of going in um, with certain risks that you know can happen in a game? But um, yeah, definitely something I'm aware of. Just being you know what I'm saying, uh, just being aware of things like that and uh, your playing style, when to go down, and you know it definitely had me look at some things. But at the end of the day, my my why kind of pushed me past that. So uh, Emily Pro. Hey there. Uh, I know you said that. You know, you still kind of feel like a fringe roster guy, still fighting for his spot, and that's a good mindset to have. But how much of an advantage is having a year under your belt with the Titans? Um, man, to be honest with you, is is is, and I say it's so hard to look at it that way, is because I mean, a year of experience, um, just playing, um, definitely gives you a uh, a little bit more confidence because you kind of know what you can do and everything like that. But man, we 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 gotta we gotta. Re- a heck of a receiver room just with it's, it's a lot of guys out there that want it um just as bad or twice as much as the next guy so um that kind of always keeps you grounded keeps you focused man because we got a lot of guys pushing each other so um i think personally man having a year man so appreciative of it because the confidence knowing that you can go out there and catch that ball and boss on to you is uh it helps a lot but um man once you got we got such a competitive receiver room that it kind of still keeps you grounded so yes man a couple more left uh paul Hi, Khalif. Um, picking up on that question about about your route running, I'm wondering um, how do you rate yourself short and intermediate as opposed to deep, where we know you've you've been very good, and uh, how much is that a part of your game that has to kind of improve to make you fully well rounded? Uh, man, I think I think it's uh, like I said, it's something I, I definitely tried to work on a lot this 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 off season because. Uh, like I said, every every route, <laughs> every route's not always going to be deep. So um, there's a lot, and there's a lot of things, like little intricacies that I that I study. Because I'm not, like I said, I, I, I'm not the biggest guy. So um, at some point in time, guys going to come up there and press you, and something. The route's not always going to be deep. So um, definitely a lot of little uh, intricacies in the route running that I try to focus on. And I did a lot of studying actually. Um, somebody mentioned the other day, uh, uh, Stevie Johnson. I did not I, I watched that guy a lot, man. And uh, Julian. I mean, there's just a lot of guys that that have so much that you can study and watch so I try to do as much study as I can so that way when the time comes I'm prepared for it so um there's a lot of guys that, I, that I've been that I've been watching trying to pick up little tips from for those short and immediate routes just as much as the deep ones so you talk to Adam much about that kind of stuff too 
Oh man, dude. <laughs> I, <laughs> I watch Adam out there every practice. I watch Adam during practice. I mean, that's that's a guy who, who 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 he. I mean, he spending a day watching film of him. I can definitely learn a lot, man. So any route that he's up, any, any route that he had in practice, I definitely look back and watch just see how much I can learn, how much I can pick up, because um, these guys been doing it for a long time. So, uh, John Glennon. If, um, I know this offense had a ton of success, you know, especially the last 10 games of last year. I think you guys averaged about 30 points. And, you know, based on that, plus the fact that you're returning so many players this season, is there a, um, you know, a, a level of, of excitement uh, of, about this offense going into this season, about what you guys might be able to do? Man, I think I think – it's so hard because we always, like I said, we haven't we haven't even played a game yet, um, and so that's 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 the hardest part with that, man. I, I think we're we're excited for each other. We're excited to kind of be back in the building with each other, um, and I think I think the expectations for each other. Uh, we we have very a high standard for everybody, so um, and, and just as much we have for ourselves. So um, there's always going to be excitement because we get to go we get to go play football again, man. But um, I think more than anything, we're excited to go strap up and go play and play a game and go to war with each other. So um, I think that's kind of the mindset everybody has, man. Let's let's get as much as we can and as much pr- preparation as we can over the next four weeks. That way when we, when we get there, um, we get to the first game and it's just, let's just go be excited to ball with each other. So. Sure. Uh, on a different note, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about the challenge of catching a deep pass. Uh, obviously it's one thing to get open, but what are some of the things you have to deal with, uh, you know, on a, on a long, long pass, you know, that are obviously a lot different than a, than a five yard or a 10 yard pass. How, what are some of the challenges? Oh man, yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely something that you want to get as much work as you can in with it. Um, and it's very hard to because uh, I mean, you just can't run deep all day uh, in practice. So, um, no, I think one of the challenges, man, is finding ways to track the ball uh, while keeping your, your your speed up. Um, because at the same time, like I said, you you you're you're, you're judging the distance of it, man, where you got to pick it up, and it's it's a lot harder to picking it up than it is to slow down. So. Um, yeah, I, I think it, it, there's this challenge is just just seeing the depth of the ball, man, and uh, knowing whether whether or not you have to catch it over the shoulder or go attack it. Um, I mean, there there are definitely some intricacies to it, but I kind of take the approach, man. It's it's definitely a lot easier to to slow down than it is to speed up. So um, finding ways to make sure while I'm running, looking for the ball, I keep my arms pumping, I keep my knees high, so that way I'm still moving fast while I'm looking backwards because. Uh, is that you kind of naturally slow down. So um, just find a way to keep the arms pumping so that way you can track it. And even that you do um, need to go and get it, you're already running full speed. So um, definitely something that's hard. That's, uh, you know what I'm saying? You want as much work as you get. And what I do with Matt Thompson, one of our trainers, man, he actually throws me, I kind of lay on my back and, and catch over their shoulder passes because those, those angles are really hard to get. So um, at the practice, man, I lay down and Matt just, Matt drills until we, and Joey does it during the games, man. So I only try to get as many catches like that as you can, just so you can see it as often as you can, because the opportunities aren't necessarily always there to do a hundred over practice. So um, those, those help a lot. Those after practice drills.